Pilate, a figure briefly mentioned in sacred scriptures, played a pivotal role in biblical events, shouldering the responsibility for the crucifixion and death of Jesus. Despite being globally recognized, he is remembered for allowing the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus, despite knowing that Jesus was unjustly accused. Despite his wife's warning, Pilate unfortunately surrendered Christ to be crucified. Following the people's choice of Barabbas, Pilate made a symbolic gesture by washing his hands, distancing himself from the unjust decision. In this captivating video, we will explore the life and tragic demise of Pontius Pilate. Who was this man? How did he rise to power? Why did he wash his hands and permit Jesus' crucifixion? Furthermore, we shall examine the catastrophic consequences of his ill-advised choices. Stay tuned until the end, as surprises await. However, before we embark on this journey, I kindly request you to subscribe to my channel. Simply click on the subscribe button below the video and activate the notification bell to receive future videos directly on your phone, alright? Let us commence. During the historical backdrop of the first century after Christ, the Roman Empire thrived and grew increasingly dominant. It was within this era that a significant figure emerged, imprinting his presence on history, Pontius Pilate. Hailing from Roman high society, he assumed the role of prefect in the province of Judea between 26 and 36 AD, during the reign of Emperor Tiberius Caesar. However, before delving further into this gripping tale, it is essential to grasp the historical context that shaped Pilate's life and legacy. Understanding the significance and might of Rome during Jesus' time allows us to acknowledge the vastness of its territory. Stretching from the British Isles to Egypt, and from Spain to Asia Minor, which is now known as Turkey, the Roman Empire encompassed diverse cultures and religions, including Judaism. Judea, located on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea, held immense importance for Rome as it served as a hub for global commerce. Nevertheless, the Jewish population did not warmly embrace Roman rule, resulting in constant tension within the region. The relationship between Roman rulers and the Jewish people was a delicate one, given their stark cultural and religious disparities. While the Jews worshipped the God of Israel, the Romans adhered to various pagan deities. Furthermore, it is essential to note that the Judean people vehemently rejected the notion of becoming a Roman province, firmly believing that their land was rightfully inherited from the esteemed Abraham. Consequently, the Roman Empire had to establish an unwavering hold on this region, and this is where the influential figure of Pontius Pilate emerged. Known for his authoritative presence and immense responsibilities, Pilate was appointed by the emperor himself to serve as the prefect of this crucial territory. One of his primary duties as a leader was to ensure order among the populace, even if it required the use of force, while also overseeing the collection of taxes from the people. Remarkably, before his divine calling by Jesus to join his ministry, the disciple Matthew worked in close collaboration with Pilate, playing a pivotal role as one of the tax collectors for the Jewish community. Despite the Bible providing unequivocal evidence of Pontius Pilate's existence in history, there are those atheistic thinkers who audaciously claim that he is merely a fictional character, concocted to illustrate the story of Jesus, who they also deem as fictitious. However, if we are to entertain the notion that the Bible, Jesus, and Pilate are mere figments of someone's imagination, how do we explain the undeniable fact that Pilate's visage is etched onto Roman coins from that very era? Furthermore, how is it that his name is inscribed on the base of a statue discovered amidst the ruins of the Roman theater in the illustrious city of Caesarea Maritima? Moreover, numerous philosophical works from the time of Jesus, including those by the esteemed Jewish historian Philo, make explicit references to the existence of Pilate. Philo described him as an unyielding, apprehensive, and exceedingly cruel man. In one of these historical accounts, it is recounted that Pilate sought to construct a grand aqueduct in Judea, a colossal canal intended to bring water to regions devoid of rivers. To fund this ambitious project, he demanded money from the revered Temple of Jerusalem. Naturally, the temple priests were disheartened by this audacious proposition, asserting that the funds were sacred. In response, Pilate threatened them with increased taxes. Ultimately, the temple priests reluctantly agreed to assist in the construction, 
on the condition that their involvement remained clandestine and that the water would flow through the temple's reservoirs. However, the Jewish community soon discovered this deceitful plan and was consumed by outrage. Consequently, many took to the streets in protest against both the priests and Pilate. Numerous individuals were apprehended and ruthlessly sentenced to death for their rebellion against the empire. However, it is crucial to emphasize that no act of atrocity committed by Pilate could ever compare to the heinous crime perpetrated against the Son of God. When Jesus was seized by the religious authorities, who accused him of blasphemy and proclaiming himself as the ruler of the Jewish people, they brought him before Pontius Pilate to determine his fate. At this juncture, it is pertinent to momentarily pause the narrative and present to you something truly captivating. Pilate proposed to release Jesus, but the crowd demanded the release of Barabbas, a notorious criminal, instead of the innocent Christ. Witnessing the mounting pressure on her husband, Pilate's wife, Claudia, felt compelled to warn him about the grave mistake he was about to make. Let us refer to what the Bible tells us about this incident. While Pilate sat in the judge's seat, his wife sent him a message, urging him to distance himself from any association with the blameless man, as she had experienced great distress in a dream because of him. My brothers, take heed of this cautionary tale. Despite his wife's warning and the potential for a widespread revolt, Pilate succumbed to the unyielding demands of the people. In a public display, he washed his hands, symbolizing his innocence and transferring the responsibility of the decision onto the populace and religious leaders. Consequently, Jesus was crucified on Calvary, outside the walls of Jerusalem. This marked the end of Pontius Pilate's involvement in the biblical narrative, but his reign as the leader of the Roman Empire in Judea continued, even after encountering Christ. However, Pilate's character remained unchanged, steeped in wickedness. Historical records reveal that three years following Jesus' death, Pilate resorted to brutal actions, ordering the arrest and execution of Galileans who were making sacrifices in the temple. Shortly thereafter, he directed his men to respond violently to a group of Samaritans who had gathered on Mount Gerizim, suspecting them of plotting a rebellion against the empire. These two actions angered the Jewish people to such an extent that they sought an audience with Emperor Tiberius Caesar, pleading for his intervention. As a result, Pilate was removed from power in the year 37 AD. The people who once supported him during Jesus' condemnation were now the ones who toppled his leadership. In that same year, Caiaphas, the high priest who played a significant role in Christ's accusations and convictions, was also removed from his position by order of Vitellius, the governor of Syria. Following the death of Tiberius Caesar, Caligula, an exceedingly cruel ruler, took control of Rome. He decided to exile Pilate to Gaul, the region where France currently stands. Filled with despair over his downfall, the former leader of Judea, who had played a pivotal role in Jesus' condemnation and death, tragically took his own life. Thus, concludes the tale of Pontius Pilate, alone and far from the power and glory he once arrogantly possessed. Allow me to conclude this message with a profound reflection for you. Let us read together the words spoken by Jesus in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your vision is not in optimal condition, your entire being will be shrouded in darkness. Consider the magnitude of this darkness if the light within you is veiled. My brothers, envision the profound impact that Pilate's encounter with Jesus Christ could have had on his life. All he needed to do was cast his gaze upon the Master in the correct manner. Jesus, the Son of God, descended to this world to bear witness to his truth. Regrettably, the allure of power, the grasp of greed, and the concern over others' opinions obscured his heart in darkness. Consequently, this Roman leader was unable to perceive the glorious presence of the Holy Spirit. Let us not forget that even if Pilate had heeded his wife's advice and chosen to set Jesus free, the course of Jesus' destiny would not have been altered. For it had been divinely decreed that his son must sacrifice himself to absolve the world from the burden of sin. However, surely Pilate could have found salvation in acknowledging and proclaiming the true identity of this man. Likewise, I present to you Jesus, standing before you at this very moment. 
how do your eyes perceive him? Merely as a Jewish prophet who met a tragic end due to his steadfast faith, or as the very embodiment of the living God who humbly descended to earth to deliver us from our sins. Your decision will not alter Jesus' essence or his mission, but it will indubitably shape the course of your narrative, both in this life and for eternity. Amen. If you found solace in this message, I implore you to share it with your loved ones. Forward it to your friends and family, so that they too may be touched by its power. I eagerly anticipate our next encounter in the forthcoming video. May the blessings of God permeate your life with tremendous force. Amen.